Welcome to Encoder Pro. In this software you will find all of the coding books that you need for this course. You'll still need textbooks, but this will be all of your coding books that you'll need for this course. You'll have your CPT book, your HCPCS, your ICD-9 and ICD-10-CM, and your ICD-10-PCS. I know for some of y'all that all sounds like Greek right now, but they'll be your best friends before this um, course is over. When you enter the software, you should be on the home screen. If you're not, click up here where it's got a little picture of the house, and that's going to bring you to this screen. The first thing I would like for you all to do that are not familiar with this software is to click under what's new for free training, and then go where it says download encoderpro.com user training. When you click there, that's going to bring up a page that tells you the available sessions. You click on the session you want to register for. If none work for you, you can email Gary Carroll. Before you do that, in the question section of the class, try and see if there's any other students that need a, a session at the same time. Because if y'all can work that out, if it's something after hours, then rather than him getting 10 emails for 10 different sessions, there'll be one session that y'all can set up for all of you. Make sure you check your system requirements. That can be an issue if you don't have the proper requirements. And then if you have questions about the software, you can contact tech support or um, call their number. So let's go back to home. We have our code books here. Our ICD-9 and ICD-10-CM are our diagnostic codes. Current procedural coding, procedure codes, HICPICS will have a lot of our supplies and um, services like ambulance service. ICD-10-PCS is only used in the hospital and it is the procedure codes for hospital inpatient. So let's look at how we would look something up. Let's go right here to our ICD-10-CM index to diseases and injury. We click there and it's going to bring up the alphabet. And let's just say we're going to look up um, an appendicitis. We think our person has appendicitis. I'm going to scroll down. You can also use your find button. Use your index right here and start typing A-P-P-E-N-D-I-C-I-T-I-S. Okay. And that's going to, we click there and it's going to take us down to that section if you don't want to scroll. Um, when you're, if you're just scrolling, this is what you're going to see and you're going to want to hit that arrow to expand your menu. And we have someone with just acute appendicitis. Um, here are some of the words that you might see. You might see gangrenous, obstructive, erythrocecal. So you see those words, are, um, those may be words that help you know that you're definitely in the right spot. But at the same time, if you have acute appendicitis and it does not include those words, those words are not necessary to be able to find the correct code. Helpful, but not necessary. But we think that we have acute appendicitis. And so we're going to click right here to K35.80. This takes you to the tabular section that y'all have read about. And there you can see that we have acute appendicitis. We're going to have to have a fourth digit, so we need to know whether or not our person has generalized peritonitis or localized peritonitis. Um, or do we have an other and unspecified acute appendicitis? And if we do, then we're going to have to have a fifth digit. Make sure you pay attention to those little marks right there. Because if you just put down K35, your code will be wrong. If you require a fourth digit, you've got to make sure that you put that in there. You can click on there, um, the actual code, and read the code section notes. Go back here. But we know we need a fourth digit, so one, two, three, four, we have four digits. However, if we have other and unspecified acute appendicitis, it tells us we have to have a fifth digit. So then we have to know, do we have unspecified acute appendicitis or another type of acute appendicitis? 
that's how you're going to look things up. And now for ICD-10, we just close right here and that takes us back to our index. We go here to Home. We have an option at all times to enter up a, a term or a code right here. That is the most efficient way to look something up when you are working in field. But for your certification exam, you need to be used to looking it up through the code book. So what I suggest is just a general habit. You always go through your alphabetic index here until you hit one of those codes that you just cannot find. When you have one of those codes that you cannot find, click up here, enter your term. Once you find the code, then go back and backtrack and see if you can find it here in the alphabetic index. This is where you really want to take notes because if there's a code that you cannot find looking through your alphabetic index, that's one that when it comes to your certification exam, you need a hint for. And so what I do is I, if there's a code that I look for and it's not where I expect it, I jot down in pencil beside where I first look in my book so that um, when I go to that side again because my brain normally works the same way and if I think it's going to be somewhere that's where I'm going to go every time. So I make a note in my notebook that, um, in my code book that says um, whatever the word is that I'm looking for and then I have the code of where to find it and that saves a lot of time and that will help you on your certification exam. Now if we're looking something up in our HICPICS, we click here on our HICPICS index and again that brings you to the alphabet. But for example, we're wanting to look up our modifiers. So for our modifiers, let's go right here to HICPICS, HICPICS e Expert, and then let's scroll down and we see right here in Appendix 2 we have our modifiers. That's another way that you can get to where you're going. Um, especially if you're not sure exactly what you're looking for, is make sure you look at that chapter. Let's also look here at, let's go back home, and for those of you that are in procedural coding, we go to our current procedural coding expert index. Again, we had a person with appendicitis, so let's do an appendectomy. And I don't want to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, so I'm going to start typing. This is a great help if you also don't know how to spell um, a word. That you start typing it and it'll bring up some suggestions. So we have somebody that had a laparoscopic um, appendectomy. If we did not have laparoscopic, we'd look here at this code range. But this person had laparoscopic appendectomy, so we're going to click on there. And voila, it takes us to the tabular section. And so we now have the number and we can read through these codes and again verify that we have the correct code. Let's go back out of here and look at one more thing I want to show you in the ICD-10 PCS Index to Procedures. Let's click there and you have the option uh, over here to build a code and this is going to make a lot more sense later, but I just want y'all to make a note. Remember that this is here. ICD-10 PCES coding can be quite challenging, but with this build a code, it makes it so much um, simpler. And this is something that will not be on your certification exam, so there's no reason to learn this the hard way. Let's do it the easy way. So here we go to a section, and let's say we're doing... Um, maybe we can do obstetrics. Um, so we have pregnancy. I only have one uh, code choice there. Now we have to decide what was done. Well, in this case, we have somebody that had a delivery. And we have choices. Now, products of conception. Um, external, no devices, or qualifier. And if there is um, things that went wrong, then we're going to be adding those qualifiers in or putting devices in. 
Let's go right here and let's look at one more. And let's look at medical surgical. Well, what part of the body did we use um, or do surgery on? We're going to pick the hepatobiliary system and pancreas. And we did an excision. Now let's do a removal. And now we have a choice with our body part. What did we remove? So if we um, you can choose that we remove the pancreas. Now we have a choice between approaches. And you click on here, we have external approach. Did we use a device? Yes. For this person, we have a drainage device that left in place, was left in place. And then, and then it tells you that no qualifier is available. So that's how you build a code in there. Again, don't get um, too confused right now on this, but remember that this is here and it will help you when it comes to your procedural coding in ICD-10. It will make it much easier. You've got your approach definitions here that are available. So again, just feel free to play around, click on things, and learn your way around the software. But this is just a little brief demonstration of the program. Y'all will have more questions. I mean, you'll see things like we have a hypertension table, a neoplasm table, things like that. Right now, just kind of play around. But know that whenever your textbook is talking about your book, don't think, oh, I can't learn that way because I don't have a hard copy book. Everything that is in the book is also here. It's an electronic book of every single manual. It's just about $500 cheaper. So go in here, play around. Note here that you've got your guidelines. Those are important. You want to learn those. You've got abbreviations and acronyms. You've got those evaluation and management guidelines. So there's a lot of information in here. It can be overwhelming, but get in here, play around, get familiar with it, and it's going to make your semester much better. Let, please let me know if you have any questions, and we will address them.